My involvement in the EAST program this year is as one of the chairs to bring the program together. In essence, that means we've been working for months to bring EAST members from around the country together to put on a program that comprises all of the different elements of distracted driving and vehicle safety that we're each working on in our own local regional areas together as one cohesive program to highlight all of the important elements related to the current distracted driving crisis. I'm currently the chair of the East Injury Control and Violence Prevention Committee. Uh, today I ran several classroom scenarios which were uh, case uh, reports and studies for all of the students highlighting the importance of not driving while distracted and showing them some actual cases that we have uh, experienced from these kinds of accidents. My role do during this event was to assist in coordinating it. We brought together a group of volunteers, uh, totaling a little over 40, and our role was to make sure each event, each uh, facet of the event went as smoothly as possible. And so today I was coordinating all the law enforcement resources here, and a session on interaction with law enforcement uh, really drives the message home about um, distracted driving and impaired driving and how those two are related. We want to really bring home the message to these young drivers that uh, impaired driving is probably the worst form of distracted driving because it not only impairs your judgment, not only impairs your ability to respond to stimuli in the vehicle, but it in gives you poor impulse control. Those three are a very deadly triad. We teach them what it's like to be involved in an interaction with law enforcement when you're an impaired driver. And I think they get a very good idea of the fact that it's a situation that they don't want to find themselves in. We bring this program to, to the schools every year in the hopes that we can get our message across regarding distracted driving and, and the avoidance of drunk driving. If we are able to reach just one individual and save a single life, prevent one car crash from coming into these schools, then it's worth the effort that we put into it. They have everything to live for and at this age believe that they're invincible and our job is to try and reach this population in order to break the cycle regarding the behavior of distracted driving and drunk driving. I'm here because I'm a trauma survivor and I was involved in a pretty significant accident. Um, speak to the children here and the kids in this school and make them aware that uh, being distracted while driving, it's, it's, it's one of the, the best ways to get yourself hurt. I'm here to share my experience as a survivor of uh, distracted driving. I put myself at risk just one time and I paid a heavy penalty for that. I ended up in a coma. My whole life changed. I had a traumatic brain injury. And basically, more than a decade of my life has basically disappeared. Some of the ways my life has changed is anywhere from learning that some of the physical things that I've been able to do, I no longer am able to do. Uh, being able to cope with that mentally, that's, that's life altering there. What I'm trying to get across to the students these types of events is that it could happen to them and even when you're young and you feel like you're invulnerable and, and things that won't happen to me it definitely can happen to you and it doesn't just happen to you it happens to the people that are around you too don't don't let yourself be fooled by the temptations to answer answer the message or look the other way it's not worth your life or anyone else's for a young driver starting out, I would have to say that they need to be observant of everything around them and to always look and to be prepared for anything and to drive defensively. Today was definitely a really interesting experience. It's not something that I've done before. It's really eye-opening 
and it was really interactive and a lot of fun, but at the same time really educational. And I never really was really exposed to stuff like this, so it was really interesting too. It was kind of eye-opening. Um, I drive both of my younger brother, both of my younger brothers, to school every day, and um, I knew both coming in before that distracted driving was bad. But I think now that I have a, I have a better idea of what the consequences are and how it can really affect everybody around me, not just myself. Well, it really impacted me overall because uh, I'm not just a driver for myself. I drive my two youngest brothers, and so uh, really internalizing what it means to drive and the, the responsibility I have to take on is really important to me, uh, and I, I took that in today. I thought it was extremely helpful this day, and the reason why I think that is because um, we got to like actually learn by doing, so like we got to get examples, and I got to feel what it's actually like to text and drive by using the simulator, and also the, uh, with the when I put the goggles on, I realized how it was to drink and drive. My favorite part of the event would be this part that we just did with the um, doing a sobriety test with the goggles, whatever those type of goggles are. To it, it kind of opened my eyes on what it's like to be above the legal limit and how you shouldn't really be driving like that. Um, I like the driving simulator. Um, it was really realistic and it kind of helped to see how it how it'd be like to be in a certain situation. Just seeing like um, how being impaired affects your driving and um, the consequences that I saw through the presentations really changed my perspective. It's something that you do hands-on and that's not something that you get to experience a lot because you don't really know what it feels like until you actually do it and that's too late by then. I invest my time in this event because it is so important to preach prevention. Uh, we take care of patients in the hospital over and over again and the patients we take care of even though uh, there may be statistics but nevertheless the numbers mean a lot. They're mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters as well as cousins etc that we take care of and these individuals um, have an impact on other people's lives and they have an impact on our lives also as healthcare professionals especially when we have to break bad news to family members. That's the worst part of our job. One life saved is worth all of the time that we put into this behind the scenes to prevent our youth from becoming the victims of vehicular assault, which is in essence what um, motor vehicle crashes are. As I say to all of the people that I'm involved with in our trauma community, the best trauma is prevention. Um, I've talked to many family members who have lost loved ones and many of them have been teenagers and unfortunately it has changed their lives forever. I kind of took this day to realize that these habits can't form and that I could use the people in the car with me as my resource instead of my distraction so I could use my friend to text another friend. And I think it's less about scaring you not wanting to drive, but more to like change everyone's habits while you be aware of people around you. The idea of driving, I know, I have already know that it's a pretty serious deal. And now after this, I that's stuck in my head even more. So I think while driving, it'll, It'll give me more incentive to practice and be a better driver, even though I know that it's not just me who could impact what happens on the road, it's other drivers too. So just being careful. Um, yeah, I probably won't be picking up my phone that much. If Hopefully I can at least uh, not do it as much and then hopefully eventually not do it at all. Pick up my phone while I'm driving. I think I'm gonna um, I'm not going to use my phone at all, I'm going to um, maybe put it in the back seat so I'm not tempted to use it all. Because some of the stuff, like, it was just really scary. Like, for example, the case scenes that we uh, saw in the um, English rooms, those were, like, really scary. And just, like, uh, when he was elaborating about, like, when he used to tell, like, the parents, like, that maybe they, their child passed away or something, it just really scared me, so. I'll probably just put my phone away, just turn it off, and just kind of leave it in the corner now instead of just having it next to me. I didn't. I wouldn't really look at my phone while I drove before, but now I know definitely just to keep it out of the way and nothing's more important than driving.
The most important take home message from the program is that distracted driving or drinking and driving is a choice that these kids, these, these individuals have the opportunity to not drive distracted and to not drink and drive, that until they choose to do that or until they choose to get in a car with someone who's been under the influence or with someone who is texting and driving, that it, it doesn't affect them. That at, at this point they are safe, but they have to make the right decision because the fact is a 30 second choice can change not only their lives, but those of innocent bystanders as well. I'd like the student participants to think twice before they get behind the wheel, such that if they have a handheld device available, they do not use it at the time they're driving or operating any sort of machinery. In addition, alcohol should be a no-no, especially in this age range. A car is not a toy. It is not something to race around with your friends and just go out to party and go to soccer games. It is a moving object of thousands of pounds that requires many nuances to control that you have no idea of as a kid. And as an adult, we understand that. As an adult, we can still make decisions that make it unsafe for the other people on the road. As a teenager and as a young driver, I think there's no sense of, wow, the magnitude that I'm behind the wheel of a car. And it's not about what I do, it's about what I'm doing to all the other drivers. And on the flip side, what all of those other drivers can do to impact me. So everyone around us on the road all the time are making active choices that are impacting every single one of us. Things like today help us um, create that public outcry and create the outcry by bringing law enforcement, young drivers, survivors, trauma surgeons together. It makes, I think, everyone see this problem from a different angle. It's helpful for us all.